Hi, in this video we're going to have a look at how to solder two and three pin surface mount devices using PCBs that have come from JLC PCB. So the equipment that you're likely to need firstly is some PCB cleaner or IPA will do as well to clean the board before you start any soldering and also to clean off any flux at the end. Some solder, something relatively fine, something in the 0.4 to 0.5 millimeter thickness is ideal for most components that you're going to do surface mount. Some solder wick, um, I've got some 1.5 millimeter width solder wick here, which is ideal for cleaning up a bit of excess solder if you put slightly too much on the pad. We've got some flux. Uh, this is made by MG Chemicals and it's no, no clean flux paste. And I've connected this to my solder paste dispenser. Some tweezers are essential and these fine nose tweezers with the 45 degree angle, I find are really ergonomic for placing parts on the board. And finally, a soldering iron, and in this example we're going to use the KSGER soldering iron that I reviewed recently. And this has got a 0.5mm chisel tip, which is ideal for most of these surface mount components. Right, so the first thing that you want to do when you get your board ready is just to give it a quick clean. So here I'm using Flux Clean, and then just giving it a gentle wipe down with some tissue. And this just removes any contaminants from the PCB. So starting with the 1206 component, the general methodology is to apply a bit of solder to one of the pads and this is basically used to tack the component in place and then you can apply some solder to the other pad uh, to complete the solder joint. Then if desired you can apply a bit of flux to each of the pads and this will help the solder reflow and you can reheat the solder just to make the solder joint look a little bit better. An alternate method is to use tacky flux to hold the component in place. So by applying some flux to each of the pads and then by applying the component to the pads, you're then free to solder the component in place with the soldering iron and some solder without necessarily needing to hold the component in place while you do this. And then you can use some flux clean and a tissue and a brush just to brush around the component and to soak up all of the flux to leave you a nice clean finish. So the process is basically the same for all two pin components and by keeping the solder hot you can reposition the component if it's not quite straight and then you can reflow the other pad and in this instance there wasn't quite enough solder on the first pad so we can just uh, apply a little bit more solder to the first pad. And again we can just make it look a little bit more tidy with a bit of flux and just reflowing the solder. And here we're trying the alternate method of soldering a two pin part and that is to apply the flux to the pads and then use that to hold the component in place while you solder the component in place. Given the relatively large amount of flux used in this method, the solder tends to flow really well around the component and on the pad. Getting a little bit smaller now with the 0603 component, uh, but generally 0603 is still quite easily done even by eye without needing any magnification. And again, we're just using the same process as before. With an 0603 component, you won't be able to leave the component in place while soldering, generally speaking. Uh, because the component's so small now, it will be very easily dragged away by the solder tip. So you will need to hold the component in place, but using a small amount of solder pre-applied to the soldering iron tip will allow you to solder that component in place quite effectively. With the 0402 component, things are starting to get a little bit small and a little bit fiddly, and this is probably the point where you want to start using some magnification to see what you're doing. But again, the general principle is exactly the same. You just have to be careful here that when you're soldering the component without holding it down, that you don't drag the component off the board uh, with the surface tension of the solder that's on the tip of the soldering iron. 
And with the 0201 components, this is where you need a really fine pair of tweezers. And it also helps to clean the tweezers because any flux residue or anything sticky on the tweezers will mean that you can't let go of the component uh, when you release the pressure on the tweezers. Here you can see where the component was actually uh, offset slightly on the pad. Because there's so little thermal mass with one of these 0201 components, uh, just heating one side of the resistor caused the other side to heat up and for the resistor to centralise on the pads. Moving on to the three pin components, the methodology is still basically the same. And what you want to do is hold the component in place with at least one of the legs on the component. So here you can see we've applied a little bit of solder just enough to tack the component down. Then we can solder the other two legs on that component and then finally reflow that final leg with a little bit more solder so that you've got the right amount overall. And we still do the same thing with an even larger component. So we tack down the component with a little bit of solder on one leg, solder the rest of the pins and then apply a little bit more solder to that first leg. In the case of a SOT223 component, there's often quite a bit of thermal mass on the large tab and you may need to apply quite a bit of heat first before you apply any solder to make sure everything is heated up and that the solder flows properly. For a much larger component like a DPAT component, you still use the same method for the first two legs, but for the heatsink tab and the large pad that it's mounted on, what you want to do is apply quite a lot of heat to the tab and the pad and what can help with this is to apply a little bit of solder to the soldering iron first so that it allows some conduction of heat during that preheat period and then you can reflow the joint as normal with some solder. And you can see here the KSG R soldering iron which I'm using in this example is rated for 70 watts and it's set to about 330 degrees C and it's not struggling at all really with these much larger pads. The MELF package is basically the same as any of the other two pin devices. You just do need to hold it in place carefully with tweezers because they have a tendency to roll all over the PCB. And where necessary you can just touch up any of the solder joints to apply a little bit more solder if there's not quite enough there in the first place. And this is the last component that we're going to do in this video and you can see it's got very small pads but the component is relatively large so you're able to handle it quite easily. Uh, so the method is just the same, tack down the component, apply some solder to the other leg and then tidy up the component as necessary with a bit of flux and a little bit more solder and then clean up afterwards. So I hope you found that video useful. You can see that surface mount soldering is actually quite simple and you don't need that many tools to perform surface mount soldering. I'll put a link in the description for the tools that I used, uh, but you can see here we're using the KSG R soldering iron that I reviewed in a previous video and that had absolutely no trouble soldering any of these parts. In a future video we're going to look at soldering surface mount ICs and we're also going to have a look at different types of solder and also different types of flux to see if it makes any difference to the solder joint. But until next time, thanks for watching.